Ergodic theory is an area of mathematics with some truly stunning results. And in fact, the Fields Medal, which is sort of the equivalent of the Nobel Prize in mathematics, was awarded in 2010 to an Israeli mathematician named Elon Linden Strauss for his work in ergodic theory. So ergodic theory involves dynamical systems which have a certain property called uh, the ergodic property. So this is some, some say, high dimensional space omega, and just abstractly speaking, an ergodic system, very roughly speaking, is a dynamical system with the property that pretty much no matter where you start, you run the system and it, you keep running it, and pretty much any other point in this space you will eventually reach. So if you run it long enough, you're going to get pretty much anywhere in this space. So in some sense, whatever can, if you know, anything that can happen eventually will happen, very roughly speaking. And the central results in ergodic theory are what are called ergodic theorems. And the, one of the main ergodic theorems was proved by George Burkhoff, who was one of the great early American mathematicians in the early 1900s. And another one was, was actually proven by John von Neumann. So in this video, we're going to take a look at a baby version of an ergodic theorem, a sort of sim much, 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 much simpler version of an ergodic theorem than the more general ones. In the case of discrete time and discrete space Markov chains, so remember that when we were talking about Monte Carlo, we had some sequence of some random variables which were iid, and we approximated an expectation of this form e of f of x by a sample mean i going from 1 to n of f of x i, where these x i's were iid. And then when we started talking about Markov chain Monte Carlo, instead of using IID XIs, we took a sequence of XIs, X1, or say X0, X1, up to XN, which were drawn from a Markov chain. Well, I guess we haven't formulated it precisely, but, that, but that's going, what's going to happen for Markov chain Monte Carlo. These are going to be drawn according to a Markov chain, say MC some Markov chain. And when we just talked about Monte Carlo and we had the IID XIs, we had the guarantee that this, this was a good estimator of this in the sense that when N was very large, then it was very close. It was a good approximation and it converged to this true value eventually in some probabilistic sense, in probability. And in fact, it converges almost surely and meaning that with, probab with probability one, it converges to the true value. So, but now these are sampled from a Markov chain. They're not IID. And we would like to say, we would like to get an equivalent result. We would like to say that for an appropriately constructed Markov chain, that this does indeed converge to the true value and gives us a good approximation for n large enough. And that's where ergodic theory comes in. So there's a, an ergodic theorem, which, which gives us this result. So let's make a formal statement of it. So I'm going to give you the formal statement of this, this theorem without proving it. Proving even this, this sort of simplified, sim simplistic ergodic theorem is, is, um, is non-trivial. Non and I'm going to state it, and then we'll, there will be some terminology, and we'll define the terms later. So, but let's, let's, jump, let's cut to the chase and, and see what the theorem actually says. So here's the theorem. If x0, x1, up to xn, it'll be convenient to start with x0, is an irreducible, write that clearly so you can understand it, irreducible, and else to be precise here, time homogeneous, Almost always we're dealing with time homogeneous Markov chains. Discrete space Markov chain 
So this implies that it's a discrete time Markov chain, and it's also going to be a discrete space Markov chain with stationary distribution. We'll define all these terms uh, in a little bit. Stationary distribution pi, so it's a Markov chain with this pi distribution as its stationary distribution. So if all this, then we have the following result. Then we have that, write it down here, this sum, this sample mean of the f of xi's converges almost surely, or in other words, with probability 1, to the true expected value, the, the thing that we really wanted it to converge to. Where here, this x in the expected value is drawn according to this stationary distribution pi. So that's going to be the distribution we're interested in. And this is for any, any bounded function f from, let's call the space that these x's take values in, this, this script x here. So it's a real function that's bounded, and it's to on this space x. So for any irreducible, time-homogeneous, discrete Markov chain with stationary distribution pi, we have that this sample mean, these sample means converge with probability 1, or almost surely, to the true expected value, to the true mean, for any bounded function f. So these are some conditions that we need to satisfy in order for this, this nice property to still hold for a Markov chain. And there's a part B. Part B of the theorem says, if further, this Markov chain, I'll call it it, is aperiodic, we'll define all these terms in a minute. If it's aperiodic, then the probability that x, let's call it xn, the, the nth, the last one, equals some value little x, given that the first one equals some value little x0, this converges to pi of x, pi evaluated at this, this little x here, as n goes to infinity. And this is for any x and x0 in the space, this script x that these random variables are all taking values in. So what this is saying is that under these conditions, xn is converging, the, the distribution of xn is converging to this pi distribution. So if pi was the distribution that we were interested in, maybe if we were interested in drawing samples from pi, then we could run our Markov chain for a long, long, long time. And you know, and when n is big, then xn, and then it, after we've run it for a long time, then we just stop and whatever value we have, xn, we will take that to be our sample. And so that, that, that xn, will those samples will have a distribution which is very close to the true distribution that we were trying to sample from. And you, what this says is that you can start from anywhere. It doesn't matter what the initial state was under these conditions. Okay, so that's so that was so part B is used to sample in some sense. This is this part B can be used to draw samples from a complicated distribution pi, and this part A can be used to compute expectations. Sort of tells us how to compute expectations. And so a remark here is that note that uh, this this holds. I didn't put any any sort of conditions on the initial distribution of this Markov chain. All we said was that it had this stationary distribution pi. So the initial distribution can be you know it's pretty much arbitrary actually. I mean for the this is but I should say that this is only an asymptotic result. So it can make a difference what initial distribution you choose. Um, you know, since you're going to stop in finite time, 
So to get a good approximation, you might want to choose a good initial distribution. But for the asymptotic result, at least, the initial distribution doesn't hold. And so th but this is, this is only an asymptotic guarantee. So there are also guarantees, which, which one, one can prove for the rate of convergence of a Markov chain to this true value. But oftentimes those are can be they can be very difficult to obtain those sort of guarantees. And one other remark here is that here we're specializing to a discrete uh, Markov chain, discrete time and discrete space. And more generally, for especially for Markov chain Monte Carlo methods, you might want to take a continuous space Markov chain. Usually you'll still, I mean, pretty much always you'll have discrete time, but you may want to have a continuous space Markov chain. And in fact, there are generalizations of this theorem to continuous space. Okay, so what is what do all these, what's all this terminology? What does all this stuff mean? Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's give some more, so let's make more precise these, these definitions here. So let's draw a line here. That was the theorem, and now let's define something. So first, let's remind ourselves, a Markov chain, what were some of the conditions of a Markov, the sort of definitions for, equivalent definitions for a Markov chain? Well, this x0, we'll start with x0, it'll be notationally convenient. x0 up to xn is a Markov chain. If it respects this graphical, if it respects this this graphical model here, and an equivalent condition is that is the the so-called Markov property, which is that probability of x i, the probability that x i takes value little x i, given x zero up to x i minus one, equals the probability of x i given x i minus one. This is the so-called Markov property. And this is also, both of these are equivalent to, so all three of these are equivalent to the being able to factorize the joint distribution of x0 through xn as the probability of x0 times the probability of x1 given x0 times the probability of x2 given x1, and so on, up to probability of xn given xn minus 1. So that's what a Markov chain is. And here we're assuming typically what, what we assume for a Markov chain. But to be precise, we're assuming that all of these xi's take values in some common space, this which we'll denote by this script x. And since we're working with a discrete space Markov chain, then we're assuming that this is a countable set. So for example, this could be either, say, the numbers from 1 to m, or like all the positive integers, just some countable set. And it'll be convenient to abbreviate this vector x0 to xn, so we'll abbreviate using xi in parentheses, the sequence x0 up to xn. It's the usual thing used to denote that sequence. So the first definition, well, I could, okay, so out of time for this video, but that's a good place to stop because then we'll jump start jumping into the definitions of all these terms irreducible and time homogeneous and a stationary distribution and a periodic and then we'll understand what what exactly these conditions are saying and then we'll know how to construct an appropriate markov chain in order to be able to guarantee this result okay so i'll 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 see you soon <laughs>